Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. So in today's episode, I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, Someone left me a voicemail uh, on my speak pipe, and so I'm going to answer the question that they asked. So let's take a listen. Do you feel like you would have done better doing low carb during your one meal a day? Not that you haven't done great, but do you feel like the weight loss would have been faster? Thank you. So I I love this question and I'm really uh, happy this was asked. It's something that I've been asked a lot, I think mostly on my YouTube lives. Uh, So uh, I'm happy to talk about it here on the podcast. So first for some context, um, you know, I was put on my first diet when I was about six years old. And so my entire childhood and and, and teenagerdom uh, and into early adulthood has been, you know, either me on a diet, you know, there were, there were occasional periods where I would be kind of at a normal weight, but generally speaking, I was either overweight or on a diet or just, you know, regaining the weight back basically. And I was on pretty much every diet, (laughs) you know, like whatever was popular at the time. I have certainly been aware of all the fads, Um, you know, like when I was a kid, it was, you know, really uh, important to be low fat. And then after a while, it was like, no, you just really got to count calories. And then it seems like then it was like then carbs started to be kind of a thing like, oh, you know, you need to be lower carb. And then came Atkins and was like, you got to be like really low carb or no carb. And uh, then there was a grapefruit diet. And you know, there's just all these things. So it's not that I've never tried diets before or like that my weight was just an issue, you know, when I turned 30. And what I learned, you know, that that was the difference for me this time. In in 2014, when I had that, I've had enough, I'm not doing this anymore. That that moment, I decided in that moment, I'm not going on another diet. Now, that's not to say that I didn't briefly for brief periods, you know, from from about 2014 to 2016, there were a couple of times where I'd be like, oh, I need to go lower carb and I'd do it for, you know, a very short period of time. And I would realize like this is just not going to work for me. And what I really wanted, I wanted to figure out how can I just figure out how to eat? It, It felt to me like, I've got to crack this code. Like, what is it that I'm doing differently than, than everybody else around me? Everybody else who's just, you know, going on with their lives, eating the food they want, and they're at a normal weight. Like, why am I not able to do the same thing? Like, for example, my husband is like this skinny guy, and he didn't really get the whole thing about carbs. Like, what do you mean? Like what, you know, like this has a lot of carbs in it. You know, it was just like not on his radar or or calories even. And, and I thought, how is it that, that to him, it's not a thing. And to me, it's this huge thing. And I wanted my life to look more like his. So once I started doing intermittent fasting, you know, I was like, Oh, this, this is actually working. You know, I was able to eat the foods I liked, but still there was always this temptation in the back of my mind. Like, oh, but what if I combined this with keto? You know, at at the time when I first started doing intermittent fasting, keto was really hot, you know, and uh, and everybody was doing it, you know, and I... I, I kept resisting the urge to even try it. And I had a lot of reasons for doing that. But the main thing that kept me from trying it was I knew I would not do that for the long term. I, I knew myself well. I looked back at my patterns in the past and I saw like I don't stick with a diet for, you know, a- after I get the weight off, then I'm done with it. So I was like, I don't want to do that because I felt like if I do that, th- then I'm going to gain weight again. And I was really at a point where I just felt like, if I regain the weight again, I, I'm going to stop trying. Like it, it was very hard to even get, like to really get myself uh, ready to lose weight. You know, like back in 2014, like I was, I was really at a point where I had, I had almost just given up and, and I felt like it, because it just always felt like this is a, a losing proposition. I, I will, I will lose the weight and then I gain it all back. So why do I keep doing this to myself? And And so I was really trying to just break that cycle. Like I wanted this to be permanent. I I was looking for permanent weight loss. And so, you know, instead of 
going on keto, I, I just observed the people around me on keto. And, you know, I tried to learn from that. I, I, I tried to see, you know, over the long term, what happens. And I know that there are some people out there who have had great success on keto. And, and if right now you're listening to this and like, I love keto. Great. You know, like do whatever works for you that you really love to do. What I saw for a lot of people around me who were on keto, they would initially have like some quick losses, but the weight loss would slow down and then they wouldn't stick with it for very much longer after that because it was too difficult. Like they didn't like eating that way. And, you know, eventually what would happen is they would go off the diet completely and then regain the weight. That that has been the vast majority of what I have witnessed. And actually, you know, the implication of this question, it's kind of like faster weight loss is better weight loss. And I disagree with that. Um, You know, in in the beginning, low carb diets usually have a big drop, like the first week or maybe a couple of weeks, you're going to have a big drop, but it's water weight. And, and so then what can happen that that can be detrimental in and of itself, because once the weight loss slows down, that can start to feel like you're failing when really you're not, you're, you're doing everything right. Um, but, but it can just start to feel like you're not doing as good of a job as you did that first week or whatever. But ultimately, you know, because that weight loss, that initial drop is water weight, you know, once you go back to eating carbs, you're going to, you're going to get that water weight back. Cause that's just how your body deals with carbs. Like it just, it retains more water. And to me that that's like a really psychologically tough thing to think about, like that you're going to drop that weight. But then once you get to maintenance, you're going to put that weight back on. I would just rather, you know, not have to deal with that water weight, uh, issue at all. And the thing about fast weight loss is it, it really, takes the focus off the long term. You're just thinking of daily, weekly things instead of just thinking for the very long term, thinking about your entire, for the rest of your life, what are you going to do? And, you know, I I find, I, I found for myself at least, you know, in, in 2015, especially I was so, so much in a rush. I was so impatient. I wanted to lose five pounds a week. And if I wasn't losing five pounds a week, I felt like a failure. And, you know, I don't even know if there was a single week in in that year where I actually did lose five pounds. I was just like, I was feeling like fast weight loss is the only way to succeed at weight loss. But it was only towards the end of that year when I realized, you know, like I have got to slow down because this is not working. First of all, this was not working at all. That that idea of like constantly switching and, you know, I got to try this and this and this and making it harder and harder and harder. I wasn't making really good progress. You know, I, I had gained, I had lost about, 20 uh, pounds that year. And I was in the process of regaining it. You know, like I think at the end of the year, I had lost a net total of like 15 pounds for, you know, almost an entire year's worth of really hard effort. So I just decided like, okay, if I had figured out how to lose a pound a week, uh, I would have been down like 50 pounds <laughs> at the end of the year. So, uh, so that was kind of like this paradigm shift that happened where I said, okay, I have got to learn to be patient. And slow weight loss is good. You know, it instills patience. It puts the focus on the long term. Like it's it's more about lifestyle change. What are the little changes you can make uh, that will get the weight off and keep it off for the rest of your life? So, you know, to answer the question, would I have done better? No, I, I, I know myself really well. And first of all, I know <laughs> that especially when combi- the idea of combining it with OMAD, like, I would not have stuck with that at all because I know for sure that one thing that really kept me motivated in the early days, in the early days, I didn't have much self-discipline, but what kept me going through the fasting window was the idea that when my eating window opened up, I could eat whatever I wanted. Like that was huge motivation for me. It was like, okay, you mean I can lose weight and, and I can still have like chips. I could still have cookies if I if I want them I can have a sandwich if I want I can have bread I can have pasta and and by knowing that that I could eat whatever in the eating window that kept me going if I had you know just had to look forward to oh and once I finally get to my eating window I have to eat really low carb I, I would have just like I wouldn't have made any progress at all because I just wouldn't have done it and as it turned out I was able to continue to eat all the foods that I loved and I was able to lose the weight and I've kept it off that initial weight. I've kept it off now for five years, almost Uh, in a couple of, couple of months, it'll be five years. And to me, that's just huge. Like I I've never had that kind of success before with weight loss. And 
And I really do believe it was the way I started thinking about it. I wasn't thinking about fast and and, and, and dropping and, and cutting out food groups. It was more about changing my habits and, and, and figuring out what can I do that's sustainable that, that I can do for the rest of my life. And when I really you know, look back, I mean, there's, there's no way of knowing for sure. Cause you know, I, I wasn't there, but, uh, just based on my own self-knowledge, I think, you know, had I tried combining low carb, uh, with intermittent fasting, uh, even if I could have stuck with it, you know, to get the weight off, I know my pattern, my pattern was, okay, as soon as I get down to the goal weight, then I get to add all the foods back in. And what happens when I add all the foods back in? I regain the weight. So uh, again, I just had to learn instead how to just eat all the foods all the time, even when I'm losing weight. And uh, to me, that that has just been the best thing ever. But at the end of the day, I want to encourage you to find what works for you. I wrote the books I wrote and I did this podcast and I've done the videos on YouTube because I just want to share what worked for me. But, you know, it's a very individual thing. And I think it's important to to look to yourself and to your own history and know yourself really well and then make your own plan based on that. So I hope that that answered your question, anonymous user. Thanks for submitting it. And if anyone else out there would like to submit your question, you can use the link in the show notes, or you can go to my website, sixmilestosupper.com slash podcast, and you can leave your voicemail there. And if it's something that I feel like I can discuss on this podcast, I'll do so. Thanks for listening. Do you want to lose the weight without getting rid of the foods you love and that you know you'll go back to eating again anyway? My book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, teaches you how to practice intermittent fasting so that you lose the weight sustainably and keep it off for good. You can get the audiobook read by me for free when you sign up for your 30-day trial of Audible. The link is in the show notes.